Hypothesis testing consists of testing whether or not a per parameter equals some value. Now the two values that we'll be dealing with, or the two parameters, are going to be the same as we did before with confidence intervals, and those will be the po uh, population parameter for the mean mu and the population parameter for the proportion p. Now the null hypothesis symbol uh, is h sub zero and it's always going to be the equal to sign. We're going to have a parameter, whichever parameter we're going to choose, equal to some value. Now we can't actually prove that the parameter equals that value, but if we can't prove otherwise then we are stuck with that and the status quo will be what is assumed. Now there's three possible different equation signs when dealing with the alternative hypothesis, which is H1 or H sub A. There's an a, usually an A or a 1 depending upon what you're reading, what book you're using. Now, if we have sufficient evidence to indicate that it is truly the alternative as opposed to the null hypothesis, then we have proven the null to be, or the alternative to be true. Now, if the question indicates that you are looking for a difference in the parameter and a value, so say you're looking to see if the true mean is 45, the null is equal to sign as always, and the alternative will be the doesn't equal sign. If you're looking for the value to be greater than a number, then use the greater than sign. Less than a number, the less than sign. So something about the question or something about the situation will indicate which of these three that you're going to choose. Now the rest of the hypothesis testing consists of comparing a test statistic will just be one numer a numeric value to a rejection region. So the region will have a either a lower threshold and everything above it or an upper threshold and everything below it, something along those lines. Or you're going to have two different tails. Now, in order to uh, determine whether or not we have significant evidence, we're going to choose an alpha level that is significantly small typically. Uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0 0.10 are typical to use. Uh, if nothing is listed, usually the default is just 0 0.05. So, your conclusion depends upon where that numerical value for your test statistic falls. If it falls into a rejection region, then we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the alternative hypothesis is in fact true. Now, as I mentioned before, you can't actually prove the null, null hypothesis is true, so either we believe the alternative is true or we fail to reject the actual null, or you say do not reject the null at whatever the significance level is. So the test statistic is going to be dependent upon what your actual parameter is going to be. For a proportion, we always use a z-distribution, and this is our test statistic. We've got a choice if we're dealing with a mean, however, we're going to deal with the z distribution if n is sufficiently large, 30 or more will still be our threshold there, and t if it is not, if it's lower than that. Again, these test statistics will ultimately be the same. The only difference will be if we have sigma or s, and, and a lot of times we'll have s anyway for the z. So we're going to calculate a number based upon what sort of thing we're doing. Then one, once we find that number, we also need to find the rejection region or regions. Now we've got two uh, tails here. I would listed three possibilities for the alternative hypothesis, H1 in this case, or HA, whatever you're looking at. So the area in the teal here is close enough to the actual parameter value that we can't say otherwise. If you get uh, an area that's too much above a certain value, in this case whatever your critical value is over here on the right, 
or if it's significantly lower than the, uh, the actual value, so it's in the critical region over on the left. If your point is in either one of these two, then you're going to reject. Otherwise, you're going to fail to reject. If it's close enough, you can't tell the difference. If you are looking for a value for the parameter B to be strictly lower than a number, then you only reject if that test statistic is signif significantly lower than the proposed value. So if your test statistic is way to the left, and this points to the left side, then you determine that you're going to reject. Now, in this version, we're going to divide alpha in half and find two tails of the critical region. So the critical value is going to be calculated exactly how we did it using the confidence intervals. We take alpha, divide by 2, do an inverse norm if we're dealing with a z, or use the t chart or inverse t if we have that function on the calculator to, to look for the t. Here, the entire level of alpha is left in the left, in this, in this case, the left tail, the smaller tail. So, whereas in the two tail we might cut it off right here, we're enlarging our critical region, as it were, using it and putting the entire level of alpha and the entire significance level on the left side. The same thing works if we're doing a strictly greater than. The difference is that if the test statistic is much greater than the proposed value, then it looks like we have evidence to indicate that there is actually, uh, that value is actually greater than the proposed number, whatever it is. So in this case, we'll find a critical value right here, and every value, every point or every area of the area above it is going to be the critical region or the area area in which we reject. Now, that being said, say we have a test statistic that falls way to the left. Now, that certainly doesn't indicate that, we are, that our value is equal to the proposed value, but all we can do is fail to reject because we're only trying to test to see whether or not it's greater than. Greater than will fall over here, and anything else we fail to reject.